Hey guys, we're going to get started here in just a second. I'm still trying to figure out some. Um, hey, Raina. Hey. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm still new to Periscope, so excuse me. Today, um, we're going to go over styled flat lays or styled stock images um, that you can use for Instagram, your website, um, to create kind of a branded and custom feel. And this is all with stuff that you can find around your house or that you can get at the dollar bin at Target or um, just pick up for really inexpensive. So I'm going to show you kind of my stash and then a couple background options and props I love to use. And then we're going to actually style a setup so you can kind of see how it looks um, as a whole before it gets edited and cropped so you know that you could easily create the same thing okay so um here is a couple of the props that we're going to go over today um there's a ton right so there's the camera that i'm typically to um shooting with uh for our blog images um, but right now, uh, in the shot that I shared on Instagram was just an iPhone 6 shot. So, hey Christy, um, you can do this with your smartphone um, and edit it in our favorite editing app, which I'll go over with you in a little bit. But this is all stuff that I'm sure you have around the house. So we have glitter, um, clothespins, pencils, journals. This is an orb that I just recently got um, from Target. It was in my bathroom wall, hanging on my bathroom wall, and so I figured it would look cute today for a shot, so I grabbed it. Hey, Heather! Um, tons of notebooks that you can find from the Target dollar section, washi tape, fake succulents, real succulents and air plants, and of course our go-to um, gold glitter clothespins or paper clips and binder clips. Um, so I want to show you a little bit. This is my prop closet. It's kind of crazy. So um, this is my Monica closet. This is full of drawers that have a ton of accessories that we use for flat lays. If you guys have been hanging around, you know that most of our images or all of our images on our blog and most of our images on Instagram are flat lays that we do ourselves. So I have these bins. They're from Ikea. They're awesome. They're super inexpensive. They are full of different prop goodies. So we have straws, rulers, paper clips, ribbon, everything. Um, all of my notebooks and journals go in here. Um, we have some glitter and kind of confetti type stuff over here and then just larger miscellaneous items. Um, fake succulents and fake plants and then all of this is full too of cards, fabrics, like literally everything that you could think of that I've picked up around the house or um, just at literal dollar stores or flea markets or the Target um, dollar section is amazing. These are the props. Um, that we use to shoot all of our blog images and most of our Instagram. It's just a sheet of plywood. That's, um, I'm not sure exactly what size it is. Abby cut these and made these because she's amazing. Um, but we painted them with our brand colors. So they're flip-flop. There's double-sided colors. There's two of each. So we have yellow, teal. We have our navy and coral color. So you don't have to know crazy photo editing techniques to get a color background. Literally the easiest way is to have a sheet of wood painted um, or covered in the um, color or brand color that you're wanting to shoot, okay? But today, what we're going to work on is this marble paper. So I get asked about this marble paper like a thousand times. It is marble contact paper from Amazon. Um, it was super inexpensive. I got a couple rolls of it, and I actually redid our coffee table in it also. Um, but consider scrapbook paper, any other contact paper, um, wallpaper, anything that adheres to um, a foam board would be great because then it gets all the bubbles out and it's super flat. So the other side is white that we use also, um, but this marble is beyond my favorite. So let's zoom in a little bit over these props in case some of you guys missed it, but literally anything you have in your desk drawer or hanging out around your office, you can use for your flat lay to totally brand your images. Um, so I'm going to pop you up on my tripod here so you can see live action styling the um, image that I shared on Instagram. So it's going to get a little bit wobbly, so sorry. Um, you're 
kind of rigged up on my tripod here. So, okay. Um, so this is our foam paper marble contact. So you can see the entire setup um, as we style it. So you kind of get an idea of once you crop stuff, it looks a little less crazy. So a couple styling tricks to keep in mind. This is a portrait um, set up here. So um, vertical image. You could use the entire thing if you wanted. These are great for Pinterest worthy um, graphics or for our blog graphics. So we keep everything bottom or top heavy when we're doing our blogs so we have enough room to add text later. Um, if you're cropping to Instagram, keep in mind you're just going to really focus on this square area here. So sometimes it's easy if you're new um, to styling and cropping and your sizes are a little bit different. Sometimes I just pop a ruler down if I'm um, editing, if I'm going to edit for a square or if I know I'm going to stay bottom heavy. So I don't have to worry about anything that's above this part and it really helps you kind of like just focus your area down here because that's what's going to get cropped anyways. Um, if you're doing a website header, you could turn your um, sheet like this and hopefully you guys can see this. Um, I'm kind of, okay, so you can um, turn your sh uh, contact paper or your wooden um, background that you're using to a landscape and you could, seriously, you could shoot with your DSLR or even your iPhone this size of background for your website header. Typically for those, they're a lot skinnier, so you might grab another ruler and have it kind of frame this size of area and keep your objects a little bit smaller and a little bit more targeted to um, not really larger than about 10 inches. So you can keep that ratio nice and long and skinny for your header images, but this is all we use for our website header images and a lot of our clients, um, we use the same thing for them too. So I'm going to scoot this. Okay. You should be able to see that. So we like to do bottom heavy and top heavy styled images for a couple reasons. We usually like to add text for our blogger images that we're using, um, to pin later or to say the title of our blog post. We also really like our um, images to have a lot of breathing room. So when you're focused on bottom heavy or top heavy, or even just kind of like going off to the side and the bottom, you leave a lot of what's known as white space or breathing room. So you could add graphic or text to that later, or you could simply leave it to just let your image not be so heavy and really focus in on what your main points are down here. So especially if you're using it to brand yourself, you may throw in your business card, a couple items that have your brand colors, um, a couple items that you use yourself, so maybe even a cup of coffee or a notebook um, that works with your business, and you really want the attention to be on that, so you don't want to super crowd your image that's over the entire space here. So we'll kind of show you a little bit about what not to do, and then um, kind of pare it down. So it's really easy to go crazy when you're adding stuff the first time when you're kind of configuring your flat lays. So let's just kind of like go obnoxious here for a second and we'll add like way too many journals and we'll do a crowd of washi tape here and some pencils that maybe don't, I mean they kind of match color wise. Um, and the gold shears are so popular so we're going to add those too. And we need our succulent of course and then let's throw in some so it's cute, right? There's a lot of stuff in it that's cute, but it's really overwhelming and it's super distracting. What are you trying to convey with your image? What are you gonna talk about in your description? Are you talking about how you're organizing your day and you really like your planners? Well, it might make sense to just have this particular memo pad in here and not anything else. Um, are you gonna crop your image too tight where everything else is too much stuff is getting chopped off. Um, you might want to move um, some images out of the frame and kind of pare down with what you have. Do the colors even make sense for your brand? So do you absolutely hate pink, but you have this pencil and it's nowhere found anywhere else on your Instagram feed, but you have it? Toss it, get rid of it. Um, maybe this black is too dark for your brand and you have a lot of pops of color. So you want to consider adding in different aspects. So as soon as we have that orange, this gold sheer kind of looks a little out of place and maybe even the gold paper clips. So you might have silver, white, or just a different color. 
but consider everything together um, how it works with its partner and how it's going to look especially cropped super tight for Instagram um, it's really easy to take note of all of those details so start small and add in a little bit at a time so my favorite method of doing this is the thing that I for sure want in the picture like I just got a new journal or we for sure want the laptop in the image because we're going to talk about maybe an upcoming webinar I'm going to add that in first I typically like to do that on the left side um, just to have left super heavy and then kind of scatter over to the right but you can really do either way um, it's really your preference so we have the journal on the left here I always try to kind of catty corner my stuff so sometimes I know it's really difficult to not have everything perfectly straight um, but it adds um, interest to your image and it adds depth um, and it just makes it unique. So consider just tilting whatever you're laying on your surface just slightly um, to just kind of give it some unique look. I really like this orchid orb thing. I don't even know what it's called. Um, sea urchin. Like I said, I got these at Target. They hang on the wall in my bathroom. So I like it and I like that it's dark and it has the gold that ties in from this journal here. Um, I'm gonna place it on top of here so it doesn't really compete or doesn't make sense being too heavy on the right side. So we'll pop that on the journal there. Um, I really like always to try to add greenery. So whether it's a live plant like this little air plant or if it's a fake succulent, I picked these up at Pier 1. They came in a set of three. Um, either way, I, I typically like to add a little bit of a greenery. It, as silly as it sounds, it literally makes your image alive, um, even if it's not actually real. So it makes it a living, breathing kind of um, element, so it's more real to people, and it's easier to relate to. Um, it doesn't seem as staged as soon as you add something that's living. So we're going to kind of plop that down here. That's not necessarily where it's going to stay, but let's see what else we're going to add. I really like to add twine or ribbon, something that kind of flows in with our images. When I'm using stuff like this, and a trick to keep in mind is to have stuff that goes off your plane. So you're going to crop here um, because you know you're doing a square image. So have your twine kind of curl up a little bit so you give it some depth but have it go off the viewing plane so that just kind of um, it's an old photography trick to keep the viewers eye going so if you had this and you want to keep everything inside the frame when you crop this and if we're not going to crop anything we're going to have a complete edge here it just kind of makes everything seem a little squished and it makes everything seem forced and not, again, like it's a real snapshot of what you do and how you interact with actual things. So I scoot this over to the edge because I know I'm going to crop a little bit of that journal off. I'm going to scoot this to the edge and twirl it so it has some kind of organic shape. And I know I'm going to crop that tail end off the edge. Um, I want to kind of mix these a little bit, so I'm going to scoot them kind of together. Um, I always like adding pencils or pens. I'm kind of addicted to picking up all the different kinds in the Target dollar section. I got these as a gift. I love them. Um, this wooden shape or color really ties into the black and gold that we have over here, but it's getting a little too black and white for me. So I'm going to pick up this teal, kind of tie in some of the air plant color and do two teals in this wooden color. So I'm kind of picky about when I lay my pencils down, I don't like the wording to show. Um, I don't want the image to be categorized or dated in any way. So I always bend my pencils or pens to where there's no logo or words. So some people, <clears throat> Abby, are really particular about how their pencils are organically scattered. Um, I'm kind of haphazard about it, but it's definitely up to you and your preference. Um, something like this would really bug Abby, <laughs> and it would bug a lot of you. But just consider um, you don't necessarily have to have everything perfectly straight like this if it doesn't make sense for your brand. So I kind of like to scatter them, tear them at a little bit of an arc here. Um, I know it gets a little bit kind of in-depth when you're just thinking about putting pencils down, but honestly something as small as that can really um, make your image look wonky or 
almost perfectly haphazard, if that makes any sense. So I realized that I don't want to crop necessarily this much of the pencil. So instead of scooting all of this stuff up, I'm going to just scoot this air plant down a little bit. I'm going to bring him around here and kind of marry them together so they can hang out. And then I want to have room to add my gold paper clips. So this is what I use almost like glitter. I don't like using glitter too much because it just gets messy. Um, but if you are using glitter, this is one of the best things to use. It has a shaker at the top, so you can literally sprinkle it on. Um, and they're cute little hexagon shapes. So, But you can always use glitter. Glitter or gold paper clips to me are the same filler mechanism for your image. So right now, this could be great. You could be done here, but we like to kind of take it a little step further and put, you know, like the cherry on top or whatever you want to consider the accessories of a gold paper clip adding to an image. Now, I'm particular, like Abby is with her pencils, how your paper clips are laid. Um, it's really easy to just maybe kind of like set them down and lay them, and it could work. Um, but I'm a fan of kind of grouping them together and just kind of tossing them to see how they lay and then kind of fixing the mess. So I like when they're laid on top of each other, there's an uneven amount, um, maybe they're not all pointing the same direction. Um, but I know it's kind of silly, but it also helps kind of just make your image make sense. So I am going to add a little bit of glitter to this picture here to give it a little bit more sparkle. Um, those pick up really well on Instagram. So I shake a couple little things of glitter in my hand and just do my own sprinkling. Um, this is something you probably want to do last when you're really happy with your image because it's a little bit harder to move glitter around to be haphazardly tossed, um, but it's doable. So I like that. I probably wouldn't have so much up here at the border here, because keep in mind when you crop for your square, that's still going to be shown and on the top. Um, but some of those also will be edited out um, in our app. So let's talk about editing techniques and lighting techniques for a second. Um, hopefully my phone doesn't die. Hey, oh, maybe. Okay, it was a little slow. So thanks for joining again. So hopefully that made sense and um, it kind of sparked some ideas of what you might have around your house um, that you could easily style images with. So we are in the middle of the day, it's like two. Um, and it's pretty sunny and pretty light. I have a, if you can see, a daylight white bulb um, in my office because it adds a really pretty blue, bright daylight light. Um, you could honestly get this same look at night if you didn't even have any sunlight with a light like that. You'd have to do a little bit more editing, but it's totally doable. I took one shot. It doesn't normally take just one shot. I do a little bit more tweaks, but I wanted to get it up on Instagram for you. One shot of the um, image we just posted that looks just like this one and edit it in PicTap Go. I use, sorry, I don't know what's going on here. I use um, Lights On, Contrast, um, Auto Color, and Crispity, I think is what I use. I can share the recipe um, on the blog on Monday if you want the exact setup. But it really helps to pull out any kind of like sun splotches you might have on your background. Your marble catches a lot of blind light um, from your windows. It helps smooth those out. It helps pull up the veins of the fake marble to look even more realistic. And it helps you control the color and the non-shadowy parts of your um, images. So you get a clean and crisp look. And then you could always add text in Word Swap, I think is the name, app. Um, and or just bring it to your computer and add text. Um, yeah, we use PicTap Go, Lights On, Contrast, Auto Color, Crispity. Thank you, Heather. Um, I love PicTap Go. Not affiliate whatsoever. It's a buck ninety nine. You can get it in the iTunes Store. I don't think it's available for Android or Google phones. There is a similar app. Um, can't remember the exact name. Maybe Afterlight. Um, it's amazing. It's the only app we use for all of our Instagram pictures. It's that versatile and great. 
We have a tutorial on our blog step-by-step -step of how to edit in PicTepco, how to upload, crop, edit, save your recipes, and name them. I do prefer over Vosco. I prefer PicTepco over Vosco. I just think there's a little bit more control. You can brighten a lot better. Granted, I haven't opened Vosco since I downloaded PicTepco like two years ago, so it could change and it could have features. Some people are partial to their editing apps, but I like to have one app that can do it all where I don't have to leave and open up yet another app to do one tweak and PicTap code does that for me. So you can search PicTap Go on the blog to find our exact editing recipes and step-by-step -step tutorials with pictures of before and afters because it's kind of crazy. Um, and good luck. I want to see your uh, flat lays and your styled images. So find us on Instagram at Think Creative Collective and tag us. Uh, at Think Creative Collective and TCC Tips. We would love, love, love to see your flat lays and you might get shared on Instagram. Um, show us what you got, add your stuff, just take a walk around your house and get some cute props. You have them on your shelf, in your office drawer, in your kitchen and pop them down on some fabulous marble contact paper and get to shooting. Thanks for tuning in guys. It was so great hanging out with you. Have a good Sunday.